Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I apologize uh, for disrupting your program here. I was supposed to be on this terrific panel with wonderful colleagues who I look forward to spending some time with, but they, they did call votes. And uh, I'm new to politics, and one of the things I've learned is you do lose control of your schedule to some extent. So uh, for, I, and we've got the science down from when they call votes. You have to leave within 10 minutes based on where we're here. So I have about uh, eight minutes. I won't spend that much time. But it's great to be here, and I, I want to be as supportive as I can to the, to the efforts uh, that you are all engaged in. It seems to me that when, we, when I think about my own public service and I think about the things that are important to me from a domestic policy perspective, I think about making sure this is a country where there's a quality of opportunity, making sure this is a country where we can raise the standard of living of the average American, and making sure this is a country that's competitive and can compete in a global workforce. And education, education reform is obviously central to all of those things. And again, it seems to me in education we have to do three things. We have to improve outcomes. We have to improve and broaden access, and we have to bend the cost curve. And the only way to do those three things and to accomplish the larger policy objectives we have as a country is to fully embrace technology, it seems to me. Because if you look at technology and things like choice and their effect on other industries, they've done just that. They have not done it enough in education. And looking at the agenda that you had today, I, I see that you heard from a lot of experts on technology and education, on the disruptive force of technology and what it can do to education, how it can do the three things we talked about, improve outcomes, broaden access, and bend the cost curve. And I think we as policymakers need to think about that strategically and think about the things we need to do to create the environment so those things can, can develop, accelerate, and to level the playing field. And to me, that breaks down into kind of three broad buckets. There's a financial or investment, bucket, because sometimes when you try to bend the cost curve, you actually do have to make a lot of investments up front. So there's an investment component, things like E-rate and other programs in the government are really important. I've got an infrastructure bill that's very bipartisan that uses overseas earnings. It's very complicated to fund infrastructure in a very fiscally uh, appropriate manner. It's got 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans. It's the only piece of large-scale economic legislation in the House that's bipartisan right now. And education is a big component of that. So we need to do that. We need to make investments. We need to do things to make sure teachers and educators really understand the benefits of technology and change their mindset so that they know how to use all these wonderful, disruptive innovations that are occurring and that they're not pushing back on it, but they're realizing it can be a massive enabler for them in their lives. And then we need to be using data. And we need to be embracing data in, a, in, an, air, in an industry that has not embraced data as fully as it should to show that these things are working because then we can accelerate their adoption. So it seems to me this is one of the most exciting frontiers of domestic economic policy in this country, because it does the three things I care about. It makes us competitive, it improves the standard of living of the average American, and it makes us a country that's about opportunity. And to do that, education needs to be improved, outcomes, access, and bending the cost curve, and technology is the only answer to those. So I apologize for not being able to participate on the panel, which will um, uh, undoubtedly be more interesting than my remarks, but I, I thank you for having me. I thank Jim, I thank Jeff, and I, of course, thank my lovely and beautiful wife, April, who's central to this effort, so uh, for having me. So thank you very much.